Hello, Empowered Warriors. Welcome to episode 11. In this episode, I talk about the relationship that is foundational of everything health, wealth, and happiness. And let's face it, if you're like most people, chances are you want more of those things. Am I right? You may have noticed that I have been talking about self-worth quite often these days. And the reason why? Well, if you look around you and you look at current events, or if you look at how divisive our society has become, it's becoming quite obvious that a person who loves themselves and values themselves would not treat another human being the way that they are treating others. Am I right here? I mean, I really strive to remain detached and I don't entangle in others' affairs, But when I log into social media for work these days, sometimes I get a glimpse of some really fiery conversations. And I wonder, what would this conversation look like if these people really valued or loved themselves? And getting back to those of you who have businesses and you want to have more abundance in your life and your business, let me ask you, are you spending more energy on your outside world than on your inside world? Do you consider the relationship that you have with yourself to be the most important of all? And if you're having trouble with a lack of balance in your life, if your finances are not great, or if you're struggling with a health issue, then these are some questions to fully consider. So listen further if you want to know more about your relationship with yourself as your foundation, because I'm going to offer some steps and some tips in this episode. Please note, I am repurposing previous Facebook Lives that I've done in my group, The Empowered Warrior with Angela Noel. So if you're noticing the sound isn't as clear as it is now, please pardon that and hopefully you will still be able to get the value out of the episode that you are looking for. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Empowered Warrior Podcast. My name is Angela Noel, and I am an intuitive coach, acupuncturist, and Chinese herbalist. This podcast is all about empowerment, meaning how you can maintain your personal power in order to have the best life beyond your imagination. An empowered warrior is someone who has the identity of a person who is healthy, radiant, and free from all suffering, and has the tools ready and available to move through life's obstacles with confidence, ease, and a sense of freedom. In this podcast, I bring over 16 years experience in Chinese medicine, countless years of self-development, and a passion for helping others find their personal power. I will be discussing just a few of my favorite topics regarding health from a Chinese medicine perspective, brain habits, and spirituality, so that you can quickly pave your pathway to freedom and be free from the chains that have kept you stuck. My intention with this podcast is to serve as a guide for warriors who want to form a healthy foundation of body, mind and spirit and sustain it by changing who they are being from the inside and having a stronger connection to their higher selves. My goal is to help students end the unnecessary suffering that they place on themselves by having poor health habits, negative thought loops, and a lack of self-worth. I am so happy that you're here. Empowered Warriors, how are you? Happy Wednesday. Today's fireside chat is about the foundation to your happiness, your health, and your wealth. And it's the secret in my observation and in my interpretation. But I think if you ask any happy, healthy, successful person, 
they're going to agree with this statement. And that is that the foundation to everything that you ever wanted in your life, happiness, health, love, relationships, money, good mental health, good physical health, great digestion, great sex, everything is this. It's based on the relationship that you have with yourself. It's based on the relationship that you have with yourself. I know. I know. So many times when we ask each other, how are you doing? How are every, how are things going? Usually the response is something like, oh, things are good. You know, um, my job's good. And, my kids are good and my marriage is good, right? It's always about what's going on externally in our lives, what's going on on the outside. But we never really consider our happiness and everything like good and mushy and rating ourselves, rating our lives from the standpoint of what's going on on the inside. So I have two examples. When I was getting ready for this talk today, I was like, all right, what can I talk about today that is going to really resonate with my empowered warriors? Like what really is going to make sense? So I thought about some of the things that I I commonly hear from you guys and hear from my clients. And there are two things that came up that really just stood out to me. The first one is no boundaries. No boundaries nice girl syndrome. I was on a call yesterday with with one of my mentors. As she was telling this story, I laughed because I said, I have totally been there. She's like, I used to have, I used to be the girl with no boundaries whatsoever. She said, I would treat my husband and the contractor or the guys coming to paint our house the same. Right? I would be equally as friendly, equally as nice with these strangers that were coming into my house as I was as I treated my husband. And when I heard that, that really struck home. That really struck home. I was like, oh my gosh, no wonder why I've had self-worth issues my, my whole entire life. And I'm not, I'm not saying this from like victim talk or anything. It's, it's just sharing. But that's totally me. And it used to like irritate the shit out of my husband that I would just like talk to these random people and just because I I wanted to be nice. Right. I wanted to be, I wanted to make them feel welcome. I wanted to make them feel like they were not left out. Meanwhile, these were the people that were coming to do work in my house. And this is not about not being nice to people, not being nice to the people that do work in your house. I mean, I have the most amazing people that have come in to help me from time to time. It's not about that. It's not about that. It's about your intention when you perform these actions. So for me, it was like, oh, I really like I was projecting like, oh, these people must feel uncomfortable or whatever I was project. I was projecting my own insecurities onto them, assuming that they had the same insecurities. And then (laughs) I was treating them accordingly. So boundaries, boundaries, warriors, boundaries, so important. It's so important when you think about what happens as a result of not having strong boundaries, right? Like, have you been there before? I'm curious to know if you could just provide it in the chat what your life has looked like in the past or present when you've had really strong boundaries and when you haven't had strong boundaries. So for me, when I was, you know, patronizing every single person that walked in my path, being overly nice, it felt like I couldn't walk away from the conversation. That was also another boundary issue in itself, but it felt that I was like, obligated like these people were like clinging on to my energy and I couldn't detach myself from this energy when you have that going on in your life it's just like another energy leak 
where you're losing power and you're giving away your power to other people and you're not keeping it for yourself so that you can use that energy, you can use that power for the relationships that actually matter to you, like your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, children, parents, wherever, you know, your, your boss, your coworkers, whatever. So I was finding that I was always tired. I use, I talk about that a lot on my podcast about giving away power and having no boundaries and what would happen as a result of doing that. And I found that I was one of those people that at the time I just thought, Oh, I have chronic fatigue. I have adrenal fatigue. I have this and I have that. Meanwhile, it was just me being brought down by other people's energy. So that's one way. It's just having no boundaries, being nice, feeling like you have to be nice. And it's not, again, not, and it doesn't have anything else to do with not being kind, right? It's this feeling that you're obliged to be nice to everybody, that you're obliged to say yes to everybody, that you're obliged to um, give your energy away to everybody. Energy is finite. So, so if you do that, where is the energy for yourself? So I fell flat on my face as a result of doing that. Um, another one is ignoring intuitive nudges out of fear of judgment or loss. Huge. But a lot of people say, I'm not intuitive or I don't know. I don't know what that means. We're actually all born with the ability to be intuitive. The thing is, from the time that children are after seven years old, like kids are born intuitive, but programming, right, stories, traditions, everything, all that goes into um, taking all that ability away from kids. And unless it's fostered in children from a really young age and encouraged by the parents, our intuition is often lost. Um, there are the people that, you know, are able to retain their gifts and, and, and have some sort of intuition throughout their lives. But for most of us, um, we don't often uh, gain that ability until later in life if we choose to. An example of this would be, um, oh man, you know, you just, you know, when you just get those feelings like, oh, like I should really call, I should really call my mom and then it passes, but it's this, it's not, um, it's not like this, oh, I got to call my mom. Like it's on my list of things to do. It's like, oh, I wonder how mom's doing. And it's this strong wave, like it's called a hit, right? Like an intuitive hit. I wonder how she's doing. And then either you decide to take action or you do it later or you just ignore it. Um, another thing is um, like when you get doses of inspiration, like, oh, I really want to go outside today and, and plant in my garden, but I really need to do this right now. Like I really need to, I don't know, uh, go grocery shopping. So that intuitive hit gets ignored, right, over time. And the less you tap into that or allow that information to come through, then you're going to, over time, lose that ability, which happens with kids, right? Because we're, we're so programmed in society to have structure and some of them very good things, but some of them, in my opinion, I mean, it just wipes out any creativity and intuition in children. And then they um, either are lucky enough to Learn about, that, learn about that part of themselves later um, in life and adults, or they never get it back. And when we do this, sometimes these, these, these hits of inspiration or intuition show up and we're like, oh, that's stupid. Like there's this part of you that's, oh, I really want to take this. Like there's somebody really dear to me that has been talking about wanting to take this Japanese art class at the adult education center. And she's like, but I'm not creative. I don't want to do it. You know, like what if it comes out horrible? But she's, I mean, she's naturally, I can see like her totally blossoming by going and taking this class, but she's so afraid, right? So, so these nudges keep coming up. These nudges keep coming up, like, go take that class, go take that class, go take that class. But then there's the ego, right? The fear, the fear of being judged and the practical part of us that we are raised, in, raised, you know, by um, society. Oh, no, no, don't do that. Like, that's a waste of time. Or, or, or do that later, like, you know, you can do that later in your life. When? You know, what are the consequences of, of ignoring these, these, this very, very sacred information that's coming through you? What are the consequences of continuing to ignore that? 
And, and really, you guys, we don't know how much time we have. We don't know how much time we have on this planet. So if you're worried about what somebody else is thinking or the practicalities or the money or whatever it is to take an art class or to go dancing or something, and you're just prolonging that and prolong, prolonging that and prolonging that over time, that's just going to, it just cuts further and further and further into your self-worth so that you don't have any self-worth to speak of anymore. So again, no boundaries, nice girl syndrome, and ignoring intuitive hits. And there's many other ways that we sabotage ourselves that really crushes our self-worth over time. And when we have no self-worth, what happens is that we are the people that maybe we don't speak up when we should whether it's in a, a relationship or a work situation, or even if you're taking a class and you're, you have this burning question and you want to ask, but you don't raise your hand because you're, fe you're fearful you're going to be judged or you think, oh, my question's not good enough or, oh, my question's stupid. So, so self-worth, in my opinion, and in my personal journey, has been the ultimate, ultimate foundation to everything self-love, everything manifesting what you want, everything in having the relationships that you want. It's everything. And the reason why I know this, and I only discovered this in my life very, very recently, where I even understood truly what self-worth was, because it's different than self-esteem and it's different than self-confidence. It's different. It's, it's really a much deeper aspect of how you view yourself in the world. And it influences the decisions that you make and the things that you say and how you show up in your life. If you're finding that you're hiding, right? I was like the ultimate hider in my life. I would hide. I would not. I mean, it was, it was crazy ridiculous. I would never do something like this even. I mean, I've been doing lives for a while. But if you look at my really early live videos, like I was like a deer in headlights. I was terrified. I had no self-worth. I had no boundaries. I had information. I'm an intuitive person. And I've always have been really intuitive. Information would come through me and I would just throw it out the window. And I stayed in um, situations like I kept my office in Boston probably seven years too long. I was there a decade. I should have left after two or three years because my intuition knew what was right for me. But the fear of losing money and losing clients and, you know, I had like, I had really good patients in Boston. I saw professional athletes, like I had all these things, right? All these material things that really don't matter. But what suffered on the other side is that I was suffering and I wasn't living, I wasn't living my dharma, I wasn't living my purpose as a result of just being in fear or listening to what other people were saying. So today I would like you to really take a, a deep hard look at yourself and see how you're maybe missing out on your self-worth or where, where are the holes in your self-worth where it could be you're not showing up or speaking up. It could be um, you have no boundaries like I talked about or you're ignoring intuitive nudges. It could be chronic anxiety, chronic depression. It could feel like, oh man, I deserve more than this. I don't have what I want because uh, I deserve more, but you don't know how to ask for it or voice what you want. It could be, you know, you're, you're somebody that wants more. You just want more, but you're like, it's whatever you talk, your, you find a way to talk yourself out of it. Like it's not practical or it's too expensive or that's not possible. Or my husband would never agree. So where are you, where are you going to be in six months, a year, five years, 10 years, 20, 20 years down the road? If you, if you choose to not put yourself first in this regard, and it is not selfish selfishness I wrote that down too lacking consideration for others concerned chiefly for one's own personal profit or pleasure so it's not selfish to put yourself first because when you put yourself first then you can help others when you put your ma your oxygen mask on first right then you can help other people so it is not selfish to love yourself it is actually selfish to continue on not loving yourself, not having self-worth, 
not having a strong sense of self, self-esteem. You know why that's selfish? It's because each and every one of us as humans, we have gifts, right? If I continue to wallow in my lack of self-worth and poor me, poor me, do you think I would be doing this video right now? Probably not. So what is selfish is holding yourself, keeping yourself safe, hiding because out of fear that you're going to be judged. That is selfish. That is selfish behavior because there's people out there that need something that you have to offer. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a business. What is that thing? What is that thing that you want out of life that you're not doing because you're, you're fearful or you're, or you're not valuing yourself? How are you being selfish? How are you holding back from giving to the world and your most authentic, truest, highest self? So think about that. And, and what are the consequences of, of you holding yourself back for another 10 years? You know, right now, I'm 48 years old. I'm going to be 50 in two years. Not that I care about age because I feel like a 25-year-old energetically because I don't give my energy away all the time. But, you know, looking at the numbers, I'm not willing to hold myself back anymore. I'm not willing to devalue myself because I care about what other people think. And I want the same for you. So that's today's fireside chat. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I am taking applications to work one-on-one -on -one with people. Very, very limited. Um, I'm very particular with who I work with one-on-one -on -one because again, energy. So I only work with people that are super committed, super ready, and they're ready just to dive in and do the work. So I'll put the application in the comments if you would like to fill out the application. And then if your application is accepted, then we, we can get on a 20 minute chat and I can learn more about you and how I can help you gain self-worth. So I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. And um, let me know if you have any questions, reach out to you and let me know how I can serve you. And um, I'll talk to you soon at the nice next fireside chat. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Empowered Warrior podcast. It is an honor and a privilege to have you as a listener. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast and would like to help others pave their pathway to freedom and their disempowerment and suffering and become an empowered warrior, please share this podcast with your friends and family. Also, it is my intention to help humanity grow and evolve to their highest potential. So if you really enjoy what you're hearing, please help me spread the word by leaving a review in iTunes. Thank you again, and I am so grateful to be able to serve you in this very exciting way.